Feynman, what can I tell you about safe electric cautery? Well, the first thing I would say is that unfortunately, if you want to use electric cautery, you're going to have to become familiar and understand some basic principles of electrosurgical generators and how high frequency alternating current is used to achieve two things, tissue resection and also hemostasis and how they do them differently and, and how you're gonna get both of those when addressing a lesion and taking it off using electric cautery. Okay, so the only way forward with that, I'm afraid, is some reading, some online resources, some training courses, uh, some watching of lists with a senior endoscopist, and a good discussion with your med medical physicist, who will probably be able to explain to you much better than I can about the differences between different types of current and current intensity, and how it is used to generate heat, and how that heat uh, works to reset tissue and achieve that hemostasis. Generally, that depends on three things. It depends on the intensity of the current, where it's applied to, what surface area over which that, that current is applied. Secondly, it depends on the, the, the specific impedance or resistance within the tissue, and that may vary throughout the GI tract and from lesion to lesion. And thirdly, it depends on the current application time. How long are you applying current to that tissue? And those factors will, will determine the, the effect on the tissue that that current achieves, okay? So, a little bit of theoretical knowledge is essential. And now I'm gonna show you the machines that we use. So uh, let's have a look at the uh, commonly used machine. There are lots of these available. I'm just showing you the Airbay VIO 300 model. It's commonly used in endoscopy, but you've got to be aware that there are lots of different manufacturers and models of generator available. And it's imperative that you're familiar with what's available in your unit. Remember your unit may have more than one type or that if you scope in more than one hospital or centre, they may have different generators and they don't all set up and behave in exactly the same way. So the second thing to tell you about safe electric cautery is a, is, is a need to really understand how the machine sets up and how the programmes are set up for you to use safely. And we'll just demonstrate a couple of these here, not all of them in this very short video. So. Remember first, you've got to have a, a, a diathermal contact plate firmly attached to an appropriate safe part of the patient. It's got to be connected with a cable and that cable's then also got to be plugged in to your electrosurgical generator as so. And you'll see that the pad here, the, the, the lights will turn from red to green to show you that everything is connected up properly, okay? Then you have to select your program for the procedure and remember what I said, where am I in the GI tract? It may be very different in the esophagus, the stomach, the colon, the right colon, uh, the small bowel. And secondly, what kind of lesion am I addressing? Is this a flat sessile polyp uh, or is this a, a, a thick stopped polyp uh, or am I doing an EMR, uh, etc. So once you've figured out what you're trying to achieve and you're all set up, you need to select the program and these will normally be pre-populated uh, by your staff. So if we think about a polypectomy, for example, we have this set up as so, and you'll see yellow and blue, yellow being cutting, uh, blue being coagulation, and that will match to the foot pedals here. And you'll see I have a blue foot pedal for applying coagulating current. I want to coagulate a thick stop polyp. I have a yellow pedal here that will activate the endo cut settings, which will give me a blended cut, a mixture of cutting, a little bit of coagulation, back to cutting that will cut through and reset tissue. Okay, and, and something like 30 watts effect level three would be standard for most standard polypectomy uh, uses. However, if I'm trying to tidy up the edges of an EMR site or coagulate a bleeding vessel or a visible vessel in an EMR base, for example, and I want much more gentle effect to not go deep, 
I would use soft coagulation. And so here, and soft coagulation, usually uh, you have a much higher wattage, 80 watts, but it penetrates tissue much less deeply uh, and is much safer for using in, in an EMR or an ESD to treat a vessel or the a a remnant edges of a polyp. And it's important that you know these settings. Now, there are lots of other programs uh, that I could show you, but the, the basic message is know what they are, know how they're set up, and know when and how to choose each one for specific lesions at specific sites to match what you're trying to achieve. The last thing I want to tell you in this very brief video is you need to know how to troubleshoot when things aren't working. You don't want to be trying to figure out where the problem lies in the middle of a procedure. You have to know in advance. And I'm going to just show you two brief problems. One is when you get an alarm signal. Okay, you step on the pedal. Usually that means that the pad is not connected properly and you need to check all the connections, A, with the pad on the patient or B, at the level of the machine. That will usually fix it. If it doesn't, you may have to change the pad. You may have to change the connector cable, it may be faulty. So you have to have spares in the room. And the second thing I want to show you is a more dangerous problem. And that is you set up and everything looks good and you're ready to go and you start your polypectomy and you cut through and you hear that nice noise that is current being applied but actually you're getting no current. Everything looks good in the machine but it's because you're actually plugged in to the wrong channel on the electrosurgical generator and rather than giving you a fault signal it gave you the noise that made you think you were applying current. And the danger with that is that you may cut through a polyp cold without any application of electrosurgical current uh, and end up with a brisk bleed from the stock of a polyp. So those are just two examples of how things might go wrong. And it's imperative that you understand those things and you do it ahead of time by studying your machines, working with your colleagues, your nurses, your medical physics department, to be really comfortable with how these generators set up uh, and how to use them safely and how to troubleshoot when things don't appear to be working. That's a very rapid fly through in this three to four minute. It's not a comprehensive um, summary of safe electrocautery. I just want to highlight the key things that you need to think about and know. I hope that's been helpful.